Hello, welcome to this edition of the Weekend Market Brief. This is Sven Henrik with Northman Trader. Uh, welcome to the Day of Reckoning, right? Uh, this is the not my terminology. This is actually what Jay Powell has mentioned this week in his testimony. And of course, he talked about there not being any risk of the Day of Reckoning coming. But he knows it's coming, it seems like it. And of course, he's warning about an economy that's entirely dependent on debt expansion. And the fact is that over the last 10, 11 years since the financial crisis, that's exactly what we've done, right? I mean, U.S. debt has increased by $14 trillion, whereas GDP has increased only by $7 trillion. And this year is no different, and last year is no different, and next year is not going to be any different. The fact is we, we are keep expanding on, on, on debt. Uh, we get preciously little incremental growth out of this. In fact, growth is slowing again, and that, never mind, we have now a $6 trillion increase in market capitalizations this year. And I made this point on Twitter, and I'm, I'm talking in the actual write-up of this brief about this as well. Uh, this all is going towards the top 10%. So we've got this ever-growing inequality machine uh, that keeps going. And the Fed is a key contributor to all this. Keep in mind this this year has been about the Fed, nothing else. You know, we, we can wonder at all this, why market valuations keep increasing with precious little growth. In the fourth quarter, we're down to 0.3, 0.4% growth. Now, I, I expect that actually to increase as the numbers come in. But the fact is, growth has been slowing markedly in 2019. Earnings have been slowing markedly. We've, we're on the third quarter of flat to negative earnings growth. Fourth quarter is not going to be any different in, in this regard. Market valuations keep screaming. Why? Because of liquidity. It is literally just a central bank uh, liquidity machine. Uh, and here we have this um, big picture chart. And I'll, I'll walk through the details in this brief. I want to walk through what's happening on the price action. And I want to walk through the technicals and some of the, the signals and highlight where the risk factors are. I mean, for now, this is a a breakout above this trend line. This is the megaphone chart. We're also approaching here um, again this this trend line. You know, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Uh, so for now, it looks like central banks have done it again. Right? They've they've come in and uh, as they did here and saved everything in terms of a slowdown, and they do it by massive asset inflation. In fact, if you look here. This run here, the last six weeks, has been nothing but about the Fed because after the initial rate cuts failed here and here, they made sure that third one was not going to fail, right? Because we had sell-offs each time that they, they cut rates. And keep in mind, this was a whole job bonding operation in terms of changing policy. This was the time when they started raising rates and they're doing this QT, quantitative tightening, and blew up in their face. So they reversed policy. Job on, job on, job on, on ever you know more dovish messages were going to cut, and they did, and they've cut three times now. And here, right here, is when everything changed. This was uh, the moment of non QE, not QE, which is a big fat lie. It's a mass, it's a massive liquidity injection uh, that they have done now. We are expanding their balance sheet by almost uh, three hundred billion dollars, actually two hundred eighty billion dollars now. And obviously these daily repo operations, and they've changed the market structure. And I'll talk about this a little bit further below. Um, I keep looking at this also from the larger market structure. This is the VTI. This is the all stock market ETF. And actually, we've not yet moved above here. This is a, a weekly chart. Here is a daily chart. You see that? That's actually we almost got to it. And of course, we're getting over bought massively. So we'll have to evaluate clearly if this is a now a genuine um, breakout and we're going to have a massive blow off top because central banks across the globe keep adding liquidity and for months and months and months to come. Obviously the ECB is doing QE, the Fed is doing their thing until June next year so far. So there's hundreds of billions of dollars in central bank liquidity added to these markets, and boom, we have this reaction. Interestingly enough, also here's the NICE. I'm watching this as a potential market pivot. It finally got to its January 2018 gap. So if you're talking about all these breakouts, 
we haven't broken out yet in, in a number of indexes and I'll talk about this a little bit further below as well but this is an interesting gap fill and of course keep in mind we have tons and tons and tons of gaps below on, on this rally and I'll speak about this a little bit uh, below as, as well. But let's put this in context because everybody is massively excited about this breakout here. Let's not forget in, in this time frame between January 2018 when we had this massive rally, uh, by the way pointing out this out, this steep move here is not entirely unlike this one. I'll speak about this a little bit further as well. But the main point here is we've had now a series of new highs uh, that were about three and a half to three uh, percent. This was the September 2018 high vis-a-vis -vis the January high that was three and a half percent. Then we had this July high, the 3028 area um, that was three percent above the September 2018 high. And now we're back at three percent new highs. Uh, we actually closed at 3120. Uh, this was the range I outlined if that was going to be occurring something in that similar fashion could take us to 31.19 to 31.34. So we're basically back uh, repeating this program here. Obviously, this is now coming a little bit faster, but notice all these new highs had produced some sort of sell reaction. And this one here is obviously the big question mark. Is there still going to be some sort of pullback here in, in, in later in the year? And, and I'm including in the in the um, write-up of this brief, the video I've done for, the interview I've done with Real Vision at the early, uh, I think it was October 9th, we talked about a year and rally coming. Well, we may have already had that rally. Uh, question is, is this move here sustainable uh, in the next few weeks, or are we going to see some uh, some additional move, or is this all going to revert ugly? So there's, there's still question marks about all of this. But here, this range here, and this is, I think, maybe just a, for perspective, this move here is not inconsistent with the moves that we've seen before for these incremental new highs. And in either case, they were not sustainable and some sort of adverse reaction took place. Now, I, you got to just stand in awe what they've done here. This is the 10-year trend here. Actually, you know, the, the, call it 12-year trend. This is, these trend lines have, and this is a linear chart. And that's why I find it particularly fascinating how incredibly well these trend lines have worked over this entire period. And of course, all the bottoms came in with the big flip-flops in central bank and dimension or the added liquidity. And this is exactly what they've done here now into 2019. This is the Powell speech when he was saying he was ready to act. This is when he was flip-flopping and flexible. And this is the point where they decided to add massive liquidity with their not QE program, let's just call it QE. It is what it is because that's how the market is reacting to it. And so now they've managed, notice how this trend line was also key support until here, right? It was broken and then it was defended when Powell came out with his ready to act speech. This was on the heels of the May correction and he came out right at the beginning of June and says we're ready to act and boom, right? So what they've done here now is they are poking above this long-term trend. So that's that's amazing. Uh, is this trend indicating that you know we're going off to the races? I mean, obviously something is dramatically changing, right? I mean, that's the message uh, of all this. Uh, growth be damned. Let's just keep pushing valuations higher. The point I've been making is about market cap valuations to the GDP. They're now 146.5%. Um, so we're, we're, we're entering a uncharted territory here because, again, 2000, 2007, that's when these bulls stopped and we had these massive reversals. So this is interesting. I'm, I'm not too worried about a spike quite yet because we see also spikes on the, on the low side. Um, this is a, obviously a, a long-term chart and we'll see how this plays out. But you know, for now... Congratulations, U.S. Federal Reserve. You're jamming markets back up, and they are the primary reasons. Now, bulls will say, and I, I totally get the point. They say, well, you know, you can. This is a chart of the Dow. You know, you have a similar 
construction here um, with the 2015-2016 time frame. Remember this was the earnings recession and then ultimately they broke above and then there was no stopping them until January 2018 and now we've kind of done the same thing and now we're breaking above, right? Um, so that's that's the bull case to say, okay, we're just going to jam higher and valuations, everything else be damned. Central bank liquidity will, will control and maybe growth will follow as a result of all this liquidity. My counterpoint to this at this stage, and I can't dismiss this at this point, uh, as I also said in the Real Vision interview, we you know we can have another blow off like 2000 uh, when when they go wild here, um, and there's no stopping it. But at the same time. You know, notice we still have new highs on negative divergences, and obviously a key difference to the 2015-2016 case is the yield curve, which I guess everybody's now dismissing as well. But it is a very clear uh, repeat structure of a you know, extended inversions and now a steepening. The steepening can have also a, a reversal before it retakes that steepening unclear yet, but what's also clear is that when this process takes place, markets may be in a period of temporary new highs, even making new highs. So this process can take time. That could be an interim com uh, correction. And this was kind of the 2002, uh, 2007 scenario, right? We had, we had the inversion, we had new highs, we had a correction, we had marginal highs, and that was, that was the end of that. And in this context, of course, you know, we've poked above this trend line here, but we're we're now still below that 2009 trend that's broken. I mean, it's 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 technically a really interesting point, and I'll talk about that a little bit further. But just to summarize, this is the big difference to the 2015-2016 case. There was no yield curve inversion prior to that, and so to me. That puts this rally here, at least for now, on a very different trajectory and context. Whoops. Here we go. And this is the, um, the daily chart on the S&P. First of all, just note this just relentless tight channel. Um, no this price discovery um, below, I mean, in between. It's just a standard, uh, just a continuous jam up. This is, again, very similar to what we saw in January 2018. Everybody was bullish. Everybody was talking, you know, massive bull to come. And of course, then it just disappeared within a few days and the entire run was invalidated. So yes, we've broken above this trend line here on the on this megaphone trend line, uh, but we're now approaching this trend line here. So there is resistance up here. Make, make no mistake about it. And as I outlined in the earlier chart, you know, it all fits within the three to three and a half percent marginal new highs. So this is now a key battle zone. VIX, boy have they crushed the VIX again uh, along with this steep channel. We've had a relentless compression of the VIX but again it's it's wedging and it's consolidating here at the lows. That's what it tends to do. It consolidates at the lows before then uh, the breakout comes. So I think this is this combination here continues to suggest there will be a volatility event and uh, it could be quite sizable. Let's talk about how this rally has come about. I mean, it's, it's really, in many ways, just asinine because this is what happens when, when central banks get fully involved. They compress volatility. And it was right around here. This is when they announced it's not QE. This is when they actually implemented it. And since then, just be very clear about this, there's been zero intraday price discovery of any sort. We are in tight ranges throughout the day. There's absolutely nothing happening. We saw it again on Friday. We saw it here. Um, there is just nothing. All price uh, gains are coming via these gap ups and ramps. Gap up and really short bursts of price, right? It comes in overnight and there is call it short covering or automatic ETF allocations and they just buy and then by 10, 10 o'clock, 10.30, it's over, right? It's just it's basically this, this, this jam and then we just sit there. And, and obviously that is very frustrating for intraday traders because there's really not much going on. Um, and then of course, this, this type of price discovery is so repetitive and how you view this in context of what's going on here, it's the SPY weekly, it comes on virtually no volume. 
I mean, the, 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 the entire rally has been on some of the lowest volume days we've seen ever. Uh, in fact, they are reminiscent of what you see in like half day trading or you see it in, in context of low summer volume trading. Very unusual for an October, November time frame. I mean, typically you have more volume there. But again, it's more like it's even less than summer. It's, it's less than the summer of, of 2018. You know, it's maybe comparable to 2017 in the summer, right? But to see this here in October, November is, is very unusual. And so this is a steep, low volume, gap, ramp and camp type rally. And speaking to the repetitive nature of these programs, you know, when you have days that are exactly the same from week to week to week, you have to wonder who's in charge here, you know? And, and to me, it's, it's, it's program trading, right? This is just a... For illustration, this is the uh, this was this Friday during OPEX week, complete VIX crush, and then you have this move higher. And you have the, the the ramp. I mean the camp here, right? Gap, ramp, camp, and then the jam into close and the VIX crush into close. Well, guess what? That's exactly what they did the previous Friday. Uh, complete VIX crush. You have a you didn't have a gap up on this one, but you didn't immediately open. The ramp, then you had a camp of absolutely no price discovery for hours on end, and then a jam into the close and the VIX crush into close. Complete re repeat of the structure. So this is this is really a running program. And at the same time, here's the DIA, this is the ETF of, of the Dow. Um, gap, 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 gap. These are just the gaps from the time when they introduced non-QE, right? And so while we've had a number of open gaps in 2019, the number of gaps have now really accelerated into this period, October into November. My view, for what it's worth, most of these gaps will fill at some point. This is not sustainable. You can have the occasional gap that lasts for years. You know, that's, that's fine. Um, but if you get ever more gaps that are not filled, technically you, you will eventually get a reaction that aims to fill these gaps. Now let's look at uh, the sectors beneath. Um, what I said in the summer was I wanted to see you know the, the lagging indices catch up with this rally, right? And that was the banks, that was the small caps, that was the transports, blah 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 blah. So now we're on new highs and what do we see? We actually did see the banks break out of this range. They're not at new highs yet. They got to this next level of resistance. Again a very very steep channel, got overbought in the process. They got some relief from, from the tenure, from the yields improving. But frankly, this is a kind of a question mark to me because you know this is not a confirmed change in trend yet here. This is a channel on, on yields. And in fact, if I look at this in terms of the TLT, obviously this was this massive run here on bonds earlier in the year. That's when we had all this negative yielding debt. And then you got to a reaction. You had a little double top and now we've had a 38.2% retrace. Uh, on and so the question is what's happening here next you know if this goes back up here you got to ask yourself you know are banks actually going to be able to sustain this move here it's an open question to me no opinion yet at this point I'm just noting that the, there was support here and uh, now we'll have to see where this great growth in yield is supposed to come from because we're not seeing it in the growth in the economy in fact looking at here the small caps Central bank liquidity, new highs, and nothing, right? Small caps, again, stop at the April highs. They've not broken down here, really. It's a, it's a phase. Now, if the, the rest of the market just continues, then small caps, I guess, suppose can keep rallying as well, as well. But at this point, we've not seen a confirmed breakout in small caps. Uh, transport, the same thing. The other day, it was a big thing. Hey, transports are breaking out. Well, kind of turned out to be a fake breakout, rejected transports, and now again below the April high. So what I'm saying is that we don't have confirmation yet in several key sectors, despite this massive jam up. So now, though, let's just to summarize this rate cut, sell off, rate cut, sell off, rate cut, non QE, and and that's been the big jam volatility crushed and it's consolidating here at the lows to me this is still a wedge pattern that at some point will call for a move higher so maybe if the year into rally has already taken place then yeah maybe indeed we could get another sell-off into december hard to say I mean, obviously we have this 
trade war still out there and they're giving us hourly updates and on, on their phone calls so you would assume that maybe we do get a phase one deal of some sort but not clear yet you can view this as a super super tight wedge that now is retesting its uh, break of this wedge um, i think the key battle zone will come here if we get a retrace at some point uh, on, on this support level here but we'll, we'll see about that but just to give some additional perspective of what's going on here i mean holy smoke this is the xlk the technology selector index funds complete jam job higher um, this is getting parabolic again we had obviously the the q4 correction and since then it's been nothing but up and this is the point i'm making in general about risk reward as we're talking about uh, all these moves higher you know vis-a-vis -vis 2016 guys you're buying into stocks that are so massively disconnected this is what 2019 has done i mean we were already on this path but now we have you know here's microsoft here's disney this is this entire bull market fantasy right because central banks always come in intervene and blah 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 and and now we have stocks that haven't seen a single down year in 10 11 years and they just keep on going and they keep getting ever more disconnected from their long-term moving averages i do point out however i see some stocks like amazon that were previous leaders that look at real risk of putting in some sort of yearly double topping candle don't know yet what that means but there's it's not all fun and giggles there are issues and i'll talk about amazon a little bit later apple you know the big winner here and it's 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 massively amazing i mean the, the market cap concentration in these stocks is becoming quite absurd uh, apple and microsoft two stocks alone are now having a higher market cap than the entire russell 2000 they have a market cap larger than the entire market cap of germany you know one of the largest economies on on the planet and they've been jamming in in the stock here's the apple weekly chart with an 83 rsi a super tight channel you know these channels go until they break as you've seen before um let's just note that apple is already massively overbought is in a super tight wedge and if you look at this on the daily chart it's interesting how this trend line here has actually held as resistance for days now as the stock has been also jammed up on the daily rsi into to the 80s we have a tiny divergence here but it's not confirmed yet um, but ultimately you can expect this not to be sustainable and we'll see some sort of reaction at some point which could be sizable given the extent of this move here but <coughs> again talking about valuations you know this is when apple gave its earnings a revenue warning in early january and look what the stock has done since you know it's it's quite something and uh, you have to wonder at some point where well, you're going to have some sort of right sizing or realignment with the actual earnings picture vis-a-vis -vis what's happening on the central bank liquidity front one of the questions i've been raising is the consumer you know we have new highs on nasdaq on dow on smp why don't we have new highs on the consumer sector you know in the summer the consumer sector was always listed as hey the consumer is so strong and therefore the economy is not heading into a recession well gdp growth is continuing to slow and suddenly you can note that there's been a change and that is that the consumer that was leading so strong uh, all of a sudden is not leading is lagging and is putting in lower highs while now the s p is making new highs there is a disconnect here um, and it's not clear yet if that one means something but if i look at the larger xl y um this chart has stalled in a massive way you know like the rest of the market in early 2018 we've had these this historic move here in, on the macd and the rsi then we had the massive correction and look what it's done in 2019 it's you know we had obviously this big recovery rally but since then it's done nothing and macd is pointing down there is absolutely no strength whatsoever it's not partaking in this market rally and this is where i come back to amazon now amazon lost this contract to microsoft with the u.s government but that alone cannot explain this consistent 
lack of performance suddenly. Yeah, Amazon, obviously one of the key fangs, one of the key consumer stocks out there as it represents online retail. Big winner in the last 10 years, and all of a sudden it's no longer playing along. I mean, it was very much you know, on, on the leadership front, and then something happened here in September, right? And now in this rally, not partaking at all, with the consumer, entire consumer sector all of a sudden lagging, something is up there. Uh, so I'd be watching this carefully over the next few weeks. And you know, keep in mind, retail sales have been flat the last three months. Retail traffic at stores has been negative. So you tell me, you know, well, while well, yields have at some point come down, credit card rates have actually keep increasing to 2000 level highs. So something, something is not quite right in that picture. And I'll, I'll just point it out since nobody else is talking about it, or I guess I'm talking about it. Something is not right in this rally. Here's the value line geometric index. I've been talking about this for months. It did make a slight new high. Um, is this enough to now say, okay, well, the coast is clear? It, it could be. I, I freely acknowledge that if the liquidity by central banks continues to succeed in just jamming stocks higher, we may finally see that breakout. Technically, this to me is, is a break waiting to happen. So I'm not convinced yet. This is, to me is a really dangerous rally in, in, in this context. So we'll, we'll see. If you look at some of the other signal charts, here's the S&P components above the 200 MA. It's 75.5. Um, notable, despite these new highs, it's slightly fewer components than before. So you can put that in maybe as a negative divergence. But you're now overtly into an area where in the past things have stopped in terms of the rally front, right? This was September 2018. Obviously, this was massively extended here in January 2018. But these type of steep rallies just don't last. And when, when you get too many components above the 200 MA, it's been a sell signal. Uh, here's the New York, or oh, the NICE high-low index. And interesting enough, as it's approaching that 2018 gap that I mentioned earlier, Wow, how weak is this, right? There's, there's real no confirmation here of, of strength on, on that chart. Which brings me to the uh, cumulative internal picture, which has been cited as, you know, this is also fantastic. And yes, they've been making new highs, and they've been making new highs. It's a channel that's extremely similar to what we saw here in 2018, and then eventually it broke down. And of course, one of the warning signs there are these negative divergences on new highs. And we just did that as well on, on Friday. So to me, this is not necessarily a sign of good things to come. It can be a sign of really bad things to come. So I'm staying open-minded on, on that one. Um, just pointing out this is extended. It's overbought. It's got a negative divergence. It's a channel similar to 2008 in context of a really steep, tight wedge on the S&P. Here's the BPNDX. Hasn't really done anything in days. In fact, uh, these new highs that were squeezed out again on Friday, it actually had a negative read on it, and you see the RSI weakening. So it's also not confirming the rally. Here are the Asset Manager Index. They actually sold. Uh, they did not partake here in this final new high. Well, I shouldn't say final new high. We don't know yet. In fact, you know, them selling and, you know, saying, well, this is looking all a little edgy to me it does not mean the top is in, right? I mean, they did the same thing here. They sold after the tax cut was announced and then the rally kept going for another month and, and they were holding their hands uh, during this time period. But they were right because that's when we ultimately had that correction and then they came back in. Um, but when they, when they get to high exposure, um, typically that suggests some sort of correction or pullback is coming and we just had that move into the 90s and now they've sold. So be aware of that uh, dynamic as well. Industrial production, well guess what, another drop. Now you can argue and some will say this is mostly GM related and may well be and we may see another bounce higher in into November, December. Uh, but I can tell you from a big structural picture perspective, that's, that's typically when you've got to be very concerned when industrial production is turning south. That's when markets on cycles are having 
problems. This was the earnings recession here in 2016. That obviously got us reactions, but we are clearly on a lower high in descending trend here. So I'm pointing that out. Here's the uh, big picture. This was the uh, combustion chart I put out in April of 2019 and also in January 2018. And we finally got here and we actually now have pushed above it. And so the question is, does this have any meaning whatsoever? Well, for, for seven, eight, nine days, we actually set right around 3090. We didn't move. Uh, it was only on Friday on a gap up ramp in camp uh, and VIX compression that we exceeded that level. So I'm, I'm not convinced yet, this, this is a monthly chart, obviously, if this is a genuine breakout considering all the other technical signals I outlined in issues with, with the rally. And of course, now we're entering here these major trend line resistances. You know, these, all these trend lines kind of seem to converge around 3,200. You know, what's another 100 handles here? Or 80 handles, I guess nothing. In, in context of, of a melt-up, but um, this is a key, key pivot zone and continues to be so. And if you look at this, again, in a larger context, negative divergence, and we have this other trend line approaching here. So from my perspective, this market is massively overbought. Uh, there is technical issues underneath, non-participation, divergences, gaps, you, you, you name it all. And of course, no volume. Um, this is courtesy U.S. Central Reserve. Uh, here is the SPY, and I'll just finish off on, on, this, on this chart here. Basically, my view is, you know, as they may squeeze. This may continue. I don't know. Uh, I think it's reckless uh, to think this can continue without a sort of retest. Um, if we get a retest and this retest holds here, for example, this zone, uh, then you can rally into year end and just jam it up. Uh, for, for seasonality. I think bears have to force price below. If, if price falls below this line and sustains a move below this line, then I think you have a very different market very quickly. Uh, so I think this is going to be the key paddle zone here into the rest of the year uh, on, on a break. Uh, of course, bulls currently have the complete liquidity equation in, in their favor. Uh, from a fundamental perspective, we see a massive disconnect in valuations vis-a-vis uh, -vis the underlying size of the economy and the trends in the economy. And so from my perspective, I maintain there's going to be some sort of volatility event, and that event will probably determine the fate of this rally here altogether. VIX 17, I maintain, is a target. That's an open gap there. Uh, and then this entire debate moves into 2020, I suspect. So... Keep in mind, there may be a viable dip, or this may turn ugly still into December. We will find out. But uh, that's the state of markets, and uh, the day of reckoning has been pushed uh, into, the, in, into the future. And uh, from, from that perspective, we keep running on ever more debt expansion. There's nothing's changed on, on that program. Trillion dollar deficit this year, and of course, um, slowing growth. Looking forward to see how this all reconciles, but clearly a very challenging market environment with very little volatility at the moment. And uh, from my perspective, this marginless new high has a sell opportunity in it. Um, and we'll find out soon enough. Hope this was helpful for everyone, and uh, I'll catch you guys on Twitter. Thank you.